Hi there, welcome to another episode and please welcome back our television industry historian, Andre. Good to be back, David. No worries, Andre. I'm impressed. Well, today <laughs> we thought we'd talk about uh, how people got pictures portably to them and when it started. So in the original times of television, which was the only way we could get remote signals and we had no internet, no nothing like that. So how, how do you get a picture to somebody? So of course the TV set was invented as we know, that brought pictures into your lounge room, but then when you're on the go, there was no other way of doing it. So the portable TV set arrived. Now around about the late 50s, early 60s, a lot of the Japanese companies and some other companies also in other parts of the world were experimenting with small portable CRTs. So Sony came out with this in about not in the early 60s and Sharp also came out with this particular one in about the early 60s as well. Now they're only black and white TVs but this was quite remarkable that you could pick up a TV picture remote. So why did you think they manufactured these? Was it possibly out of Japan, people living in smaller places or well, was it a second TV? for the bedroom or the kitchen bench. I know, I remember there used to be marketing, people had these on their, on the benches, I think. Yeah, I think it was a gimmick, you know, yeah, okay. people had to have the latest and greatest thing. It was an mm. absolute achievement to mm. get something that size mm. that didn't have valves in it. Because you've got to remember the TV set still had valves which got very hot, they of were course. very clunky, heavy. And uh, to have something that was that small and portable is amazing. Even though the CRT is like a giant valve itself, mm it was still incredible that it could be made into something like this. And were these affordable? Oh no, they would have been pretty expensive. Yeah. Like this would have been probably about $1,800 wow. in our money mm. today to buy that back in the 1960s. So okay. it was a lot of money. That was probably, you know, 300 pounds or something like that is a rough estimate. Yeah. And so, so have you collected most of these? Well, these have been uh, collections for over many years. Yeah. People have disregarded them. Uh, bear in mind that none of them will work now because the analog TV system is kaput, no more. So uh, it's today we've got them running on an RF converter, which is doing a reasonable job trying to run them all. So with your uh, your business Vidfilm, have, have any of these, we've talked about in the past that some of your old TV equipment gets hired out to TV shows, period dramas and things, have any of these things? Yeah, a couple appeared? of them have been out in different shows, so uh, keep watching, you okay, might uh, discover them in the background. But anyhow, I'll sort of quickly explain what we've got here. We've got, um, as I mentioned earlier, these are early 60s, so these are sort of very early portable ones. There was some made in the 50s but they were still valve driven and required lots of batteries. And just a question, so UHF hadn't kicked in at this point? These were all VHF? Oh, not, not, not in not Australia? Not really, no, not yeah, here, okay. no, no. We were just VHF because mm -hmm. we'd only been, and the time that these would have been came along, television would have only been going in Australia five, six, seven years sure. at the mm -hmm. most. So it was pretty new. Mm -hmm. So there was no colour or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But um, so sort of from that, uh, it was getting into the 60s and then in the later 60s, this particular set here would have been inspired by the man on the moon. Okay. Because if you have a look, it's like a space helmet. Yeah. And uh, the, these were quite a popular thing. And now today, they're very sought after and they bring in a lot of money. And they came in various sort of colours like orange and red and blue. And, and this is a uh, white one. I think I remember um, seeing one of those in Brashes up at the Whitehorse Plaza in the <laughs> 1970s. But I, I didn't think the, I thought the Black Dome, it wasn't actually a really great way of watching TV. I thought it was more gimmicky than... No, well, it was an absolute gimmick. And yeah. if you have a look at the ad that you've put up there, yeah. you can see how it's inspired by a spaceman's helmet. Mm. And of course, late 60s, you know, it was all about the man on the moon and everything. So what? that was the perfect thing to bring out at the time. So, so obviously that inspired the manufacturer. So what, sorry, what uh, era are we talking? Late, late 60s? 60s, okay. Yeah. But I remember these in the 70s, would that be right? Yeah, well yeah, they okay. went for a few years, they were very popular, they okay. sort of like were quite an innovative sort of yeah. thing at the time. And did they ever do a colour version of this or was that no, the space thing was sort of over? Yeah, the okay. yeah, space thing was over and that was just, yeah. that was sort of it. But they have appeared in a few <laughs> retro yeah, right. movies around the world so they're, they're pretty well known for what they are mm. and instead of sort of following from that mm -hmm. um you got into other tv sets this is a pop-up one wow and uh this was another way of trying to keep things compact and again very gimmicky uh we might get a picture on that in a minute when it uh, warms, warms up. up they were the days yeah so can i just so all this stuff's out of japan right in all this my, okay. yeah all this stuff so is, we're talking yeah. sony sony sharp National Panasonic, because National, we had it here, Panasonic yeah, okay. in other countries, so same company. That's JVC, um, the space that's JVC, one. That's yeah, JVC, yes okay. it is. So this one, mm. this followed sort of this, and uh, yeah, we've got a picture on there okay. now. So this is the one that uh, you may be familiar with, Well, and it was very portable. Well, back in the day, um, 
Uh, sorry, that's the advertising uh, brochure for that one. That is correct, yeah. Um, so you can see... Our slideshow here. Now, we used to use these, something similar to this, in uh, for live crosses for the morning for the Today Show. Yes, and I used to do the same thing. And and here's just a wide <laughs> shot. I just sna snapped this. It's not particularly well composed or anything, but it still tells a story. And I've uh, zoomed in, and if you can see on the ground, next to the old tube camera, is, is uh, a small is a small black and white TV, very similar to that one. And of course, because of the analog signal, the transmission, there wasn't yeah. much delay and we actually no. used to have to sort of hold that just off. And you could queue live off yeah, exactly, yeah. So that was uh, very handy, you just put an earpiece in and off you go. Yeah, okay. So that was sort of uh, sort of that where we got to with those. And then of course, they were trying to get things even a bit smaller and I've got this little one wow. here. And uh, this this was probably the smallest one that wow. I'd ever seen in that time. Yeah, right. Standard was the brand. It was a Japanese. It was just a generic sort mm -hmm. of brand of TV. But it was it was quite remarkable because that's the smallest screen that yeah. uh, sort of came out at that time. Mind you, it had uh, batteries internally. At the moment, I'm running these things on external power packs because the the batteries are all they yeah. were rechargeable. Some of them, and they're just you know way past there. So their with day. um with controlling these uh, TVs, it was pretty much what, volume, brightness? Same as a normal television, contrast, channel selector, but miniaturized. And horizontal hold? Yep, all the vertical same hold as well. Yep. Okay, you now they were, were they at the, there at the front? Slightly okay. out of vertical hold. And uh, I, because I so recall, you can adjust all that. Yeah, as a kid, the, the vertical hold and the horizontal hold were actually at the back. They weren't actually featured so Just much. Just depended on yeah, the manufacturer. Okay. All right. And, but, did you know, they do anything else? Like they weren't like combined, you know, AM tuners or anything like that. They well, these are all just televisions. Okay. Oh, this one does actually have a tuner. That's what I was thinking. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Some and of them did something. In fact, this one, the Spokesman one, some of them had a digital clock radio down the bottom, which was like a flip yeah, okay. mechanical clock radio. Okay. So, Andre, what else have you got lurking well, behind there? Well, I've got another one here. We've got quite a few of these here today, and this is a very compact one with yep. a television. Okay. Actually built in. This is actually a normal sort of a radio. Mm -hmm. But uh, they've incorporated this little tiny wow. CRT, and it's about uh, three and a half inches in size, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> it has this bulky power supply on the side, right. which can come off, yep. and so it makes it more portable, and you can run it on its own right. internal batteries. And with these things, they gave you all sorts of things, like there was a bag to put it in. Wow. And, um, Lifestyle. This is so you could take yeah. it camping, and yeah, okay. uh, you could actually put it around your neck, and wow. off you'd go. You so. That's and that's JVC. Portable. JVC, okay. yeah, they seem to be big on these things. Do you think people really used them? Do you think they really did go camping? Because well, the most of the time, if you did go camping, you probably didn't have TV reception <laughs> anyhow. I think most of the time, okay. people just wanted to get away with it. But it was just, it was who has these things? It was like having the latest mobile phone and yeah. And I think um, a, a second TV in the house, my recollection, uh, was much desired because no one could ever agree on watching one mm. TV show. So it was great if you could just go to another room and exactly. watch what and you, you wanted you to watch. You've got to remember, this was like having the best iPhone yeah, available okay. because yeah, okay. it was the only way you could get pictures. It was a gimmick. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I mean, you couldn't really sit there and watch a movie on a three-inch screen. You no, can no, go no. cross-eyed, but then people do watch things on mobile phones. But, but it's funny if you think about um, you know, the Hollywood history <laughs> and, and, and TV when it was launched, how, how people yeah. were watching um, things on on small horrible tubes right. and it just about yeah. put Hollywood out of business and they kept going cinema scope and bigger screens That's and cinerama correct, yes. and people still just wanted to stay home yeah. and watch a small TV, it was bizarre. So Andre, before us, these antennas, these telescopic antennas yes. and um, reception was a huge issue um, that, you know, just because you had a, an antenna on the roof, it didn't actually mean you had good reception and, and here in Melbourne, if you didn't have a good um, line of sight to Mount Dandenong and Sydney is very pro problematic because of the topography. So uh, aerials were a big issue and uh, the TV either came with one or you bought the accessories for one, so that was... That's uh, a very modern day one. Was yeah, it? That okay. Was, that's, uh, that was a, a power, of the, a way of trying to get the signal in. Uh, yeah. Probably and start to use that for digital almost. Okay, and then, but what happened with these? Um, they often broke. Well, notoriously and, so, yes. And you, in and fact, you, these are all intact, which is absolutely amazing. It is amazing, amazing. <laughs> but you didn't um, tend to fix them. And so what we had as a solution was... Oh, the dreaded coat The coat way, hanger, yeah. some 300-ohm <laughs> um, ribbon wire, aerial wire, and a peg, 
and we will just concoct ways of getting a better, a better uh, signal. And, and I remember one particularly when the aerial <laughs> broke, um, we, you'd just break off, or if there was one uh, part of the aerial still there, you would just bend, straighten up the coat hanger and stick it in and then sort of turn it around and sticky yeah, tape it in the right direction. We might direction. have to do that on one of these uh, okay. a little bit later. We might have an okay. example of that. But so. I think <laughs> I think people out here will probably uh, identify with that. So Yes, absolutely. Um, all right, well, look, we'll call it quits here. We'll call this part one yep. because we've got another batch of TVs. Uh, so we'll call this part one and uh, we will come back for part two in the next episode of Camera Peeps.